Welcome to Thinking Green. I'm Rana, and uh, we're back. It's after the election, so we're not going to talk about campaign issues or candidates. Uh, we're returning to our usual end of the year uh, spotlighting nonprofit organizations in New London that are really making a, a change, in, a difference in the quality of life in our city. So I'm happy to welcome again Madhu Gupta, who is the executive director of the Public Library of New London, and Neen Roth, who is president of the board uh, of, the, of the library, to talk about well, what's old and what's new with the library. So welcome, both of you. Thank you, Donna. It's great to be back, Rana. Yeah, it's nice to be back in person, too. Right. Um, unfortunately, people can't call in. We're taping this in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But um, it is really nice to start having some in-person interviews again. So um, I know the you know, community is familiar with both of you, but maybe each of you wants to say a few words about how you got involved with the Public Library of New London. Well, we Either first. order. Well, since I have the seniority, <laughs> <Yes>. I guess. <laughs> I can't tell you. I think it was back in the 1990s when a friend who was on the board said, hey, are you interested in serving on the board of the Public Library of New London? We really don't work too much. You know, we just meet once a month. So I said yes. Well, that was the nicest lie I ever was told. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not the only one in a really good organization who's been told that. I wouldn't necessarily, I shouldn't necessarily characterize it as a lie. It was um, uh, a veiled truth. <laughs> <laughs> but um, since that time, I've enjoyed kind of coming along and learning about the library and seeing what it does. And it's a great way to service a community because it's so all-embracing. Everybody of every age, of every background can come into the library and use our services and programs, and we can usually help them in some way with whatever questions they have. So it's very encouraging that way. So I'm pleased that I succumbed to the <laughs> temptation. <laughs> Even though it's not just hardly any work. No, it, sometimes it's more work than others, but we have been blessed to have very good executive directors, and we are very blessed to have Madhu Thank as you. our executive director because she's right out there uh, on the firing lines and keeping us current and also preserving our traditions. So I'm very pleased. Thank you so <laughs> much, <laughs> Thank you so much for your kindness. Uh -huh. So I started at the Public Library of New London in 2013. I started as a part-time staff member at the information desk. And in a couple of years, when funding was available for a full-time staff member, I was the head of information services. Um, and now, uh, when Suzanne retired, the position was open, and I applied for the position. And I became the director of the library, which means um, we not only manage what happens in the library, staff library, we work for the community, we serve the community, but we are also learning from other libraries and we work together with other libraries because we are in a lion consortium. So uh, we also share resources, which is the beauty of the library. You know, that's a change from when I was a kid, uh, that libraries, like communicate with each other and when we moved to Connecticut in I think 1977 or 78 it was kind of surprising to us that you know you could take a book out of different libraries mm -hmm. in different towns with your library and not necessarily return the book where you took it out and 
you know, order books from out of state, uh, all over mm -hmm. the place. And so I think that, that networking among libraries has been a really good development over, well, it's 30 years now. <laughs> it's a long time. But, but it wasn't always that way, and I, I remember when it wasn't. So I guess um, there are a lot of things, uh, you know, resources at the library and uh, things you can find there. There is a, you know, the, the, there is a very complete website that if whatever questions you have can be answered or there are lots of, you know, phone numbers and links of people you can ask. But uh, let's talk about, you know, the different things people can find at the library. Um, do you want to talk about the toy library? I am going to talk about time? a lot of different sure. things. <laughs> yes. uh, kind of with the free library card. So if, in, if you live in New London, you get a library card from New London. But in Connecticut, you get a library card from the, from the town or city where you live, but you can use that library card throughout in Connecticut. You can check out any material from anywhere. Yes, we do ask that our DVDs are returned in, in our building so that just because items get damaged and DVDs are expensive to replace. So um, with a free library card, the newest addition to the library is the toy library, which our community loves, loves, loves. So, so through grant money, we were able to um, invest in toys for children. Toys, I won't say toys, but board games and other games for teens. So these items you can check out using the library card. So toys are expensive and you children outgrow toys very soon. So basically if you buy a toy, it's expensive. You bring it home and after three weeks, the child is like, eh, I don't want to use it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I need something else to challenge me. So that this toy library takes care of your needs. As a family and children with every single card, you can check out about three toys. Uh, you take those toys, you play with them, you bring them back. You can renew them if you like the toy too much, but you can come and look for something else that's more challenging, more enjoyable by the family or the child. Um, with a free library card, you can check out eBooks, you can check out books, you can use our databases. Our, da our database is the grant database, which is very, very popular. So we subscribe to the foundation directory online, which is um, our database to search for grants um, or to increase your knowledge about grant makers. There's also reports and activity that these grant makers are doing. What have, they, what have they done in the past? Who have they funded in the past? So information like that. You can also learn a language with your free library card. So we, are, we have Pronunciator, which is our database. And if you are at home and you want to learn another language, there are, there are more than 100 languages to learn. And you can buy your free library card. You can do that. Um, you can come to the library, and even if you do not have a library card, there is a notary service available at the library. You can uh, print items from your device directly to the library and come and collect them. Um, we have taken make bags, which is during COVID when people were not coming too much into the building, and families, and you would, you would see children and families on devices. That was a way to keep the family connected. That was a way to take the screen time out of people's lives. So take and make bags became so popular that they, even after people have started coming into the building, they still look for take and make bags. So we continue to provide take and make materials. Um, teen programming, we have a teen room now. It's been one year and it, we are successfully running that teen room with gaming, with coding program, adulting programs, uh, discussions. Last week we had, um, Poet Laureate Josh Brown, New London Poet Laureate. Oh, yeah. He did a, po a poetry program for us, and we had uh, the teens were all excited, and it, it, it was a creative, like you put together something, and there was rapping. So uh, programs like that. So there, there's so much available in the library. You can check out DVDs. You can um, so adapt a book fundraiser is going on in the library right now. Um, well, you know, I was a preschool teacher for many years. And I worked for Head Start as a home visitor. And getting library cards for my families was a big priority, mm -hmm. at, you know, and, and it helped that our classroom was located at St. James Church, so mm -hmm. we could, mm -hmm. like, walk to the library from the classroom. And, you know, even then, it was fairly easy to motivate families to get the library card, uh, you know, 
we, you know, they'd get a card and then we'd get the free museum passes. Right. That's another perk mm -hmm. uh, of the free library card. But uh, at the time, I don't think there were, was a toy library to check out. I'm thinking, wow, that would be even easier to <laughs> get these families to want sure. library cards. One thing I noticed looking at your website um, was that with some, uh, with some uh, things left out of that program, uh, library fines seem to be a thing of the past for, for most traditional like print books and mm -hmm. things like that. Do you want to talk about that policy and you know why you're not collecting fines anymore on a lot of items? Well, it's kind of a trend nationally, especially among municipal libraries. Uh, the population that we serve is a population that probably is more apt to come in and use our materials and so on. And because it's a free library, if you're charging people who have lost or forgotten or haven't returned something, it's no longer a free library. And sometimes that dis disappoints people and dissuades them from coming in and using the library. So along with the trend towards not charging people fines any longer, we decided that was a good thing to do given our community and given the amount of money that we received from fines, it really didn't make sense to go through all that. Plus the goodwill that um, not having fines creates is really more worthwhile. We want people to come in. Certainly we want our materials returned so that other people can use them. That's part of the social contract sure. of the library. But we understand that things get lost, dogs get hungry, dogs still <laughs> eat. There's not much homework to eat anymore since everybody's online, but their dogs will still eat the books that you bring home and things. Um, so we felt that that was a better way of handling things. Uh, Madhu, do you know of most libraries in Connecticut now do that or mostly municipal I, libraries? Uh, most libraries are doing that and the ones who have not done it, they are still like, they're still fighting for it. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, there are some libraries that depend on uh, fines in their budget a lot, oh. but they are still like, there is an email that goes out on our library land world where they ask you, if you are fine free, can you let us know how you went through the process and what helped you? So libraries are still working on it. There are, I believe, 61 or 101, I don't remember the right number, but 61 or 101 li libraries who are fine free in Connecticut, and the trend will move on. Yeah, I thought of that because, you know, when I was doing my preschool mm -hmm. teacher, I did occasionally have parents who said, oh no, I can't get a library card again because mm -hmm. when I was in high school, I oh, lost right. a book <laughs> and I yeah. never paid for it. And I can't, like they mm -hmm. just thought they'll never in their right. lives ever be able to have a library card again if they don't pay for this, right. this book that they lost you know, when they were 17 years old, and now they're, they're 25, but they still, yeah. they'll, as you yeah, said, they'll yeah. go into the library. They'll, they would take their kids to story times mm -hmm. or for activities, but they didn't want their name anywhere yeah. out oh, there. Oh, that's sad. But Drana, when you see families come in, the children, uh, uh, you know, as an adult, you'll take one, two, three, four, five books, but as a child, you'll take like 20 books, each card, 20 books. Now, if a child returns these books late, uh, the fines add up every day. Yeah. So we don't want to penalize our um, patrons. Yeah. So we want them to come back fine. It's two days late, that's fine. I mean, the books are, uh, to be honest, the books are coming back on time. Nobody, yeah. uh, I mean, we don't have those problems anymore. The books are coming back and families are happy, little children are happy. So it works out well for all of us. Well, I guess you know the fines really weren't much of a deterrent, mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, and, and I think maybe on a you know broader level, we're finding that these kinds of minor punitive things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't really have the impact that we think they're they're going to. Right. They have no. some unintended poor consequences, and they don't necessarily drive the behavior you want anyway. Sure. Yeah, so, they, they, we want to get away from that idea of the punitive measures mm -hmm. and so on because it does prevent people from accessing most of the stuff that they would want to and it has uh, um, 
an uneven uh, effect on communities. Um, however, if a book is destroyed in <laughs> some way, if, you're, if your dog only eats the first five chapters, we would ask that you pay us enough to replace it. But right. then again, you know, we understand that not everybody is capable of doing that. That's why the library exists. So we try to be understanding. We're trying to break away from the old stereotyped uh, vision of the librarian with her hair in a bun going around <laughs> telling everybody <laughs> to, to quiet. be quiet. <laughs> right. Right. Well, sure. yeah, I mean, that was the library of my youth. But even when my children were young, libraries were getting away from like having to be really quiet in children's mm -hmm. rooms, for example. And parents were already encouraged you know, by the late 70s and early 80s, I think, to read aloud to their children in the library and mm -hmm. or to play with the puzzles uh, and not be silent about it. But yeah, the libraries of my childhood, you picked up books, you took them home, but you didn't really do much while you were there other than looking at the books and making choices. So, so even though so much has ha gone digital mm -hmm. and the library is updating, uh, there's still a lot of like tangible stuff in the library, like print books. So when someone walks into the library, what do they see that they can have access to that you know you can hold in your hand? Um, Rana, I, there is a there is a, there are a large number of people who love ebooks because they're easy. You can get them whenever you want them. A print book may not be on the shelf. However, having said that, there is a lot that you walk into the library and you can access, which is print book collection, which is uh, all genre. And there are computers that you can use, which is, um, com uh, we have a 30 minute session computer and then we have a 15 minute, plus we also have job search computers. So you can apply for jobs and you can search for jobs and, and those two computers have no time limit, so you can sit there and do that. There are also uh, many, many databases, plus our staff members are able to help you on computers, say you are working on accessing your healthcare information. And many people just walk in and ask for that help. Now we also have a digital navigator in the library, which means, say you have a tablet, or you have a phone, or you have any question about your device, or you need to learn how to apply for a job. I mean, gone are those days when you would walk with a resume and oh, apply yeah. for it. So how difficult is that process You know, for someone who's, who's never done that? We do get people. We do get people who have no email address so far. So those are the things that you can get help with. We have DVDs that you can touch and feel and check out if you <laughs> would like. There are newspapers, magazines that you can sit down and read. Um, and in the children's room, as I said, there's no new toy room. We also have steam kits to borrow. So steam kits means you take it home, you work on a science project, and you bring it back. So those are take again. They're not one time. They're take again, and you bring them back. There are, we have several steam kits to borrow. Um, books in the children's room. There are puzzles. And the last room in the library has no technology. In the children's room has no technology, which means it's only a toy drawing, oh, so playing with cars, that. that kind of room. So parents and children sit down and uh, I've seen little boys play with cars and there are Legos that are available you can build. Um, so there are so many different things that you can do. In the teen room, uh, while I know gaming is so popular with teens, but we have a board game night. Um, we also, like we cook, we do cooking projects. So teens love to cook and we have a small kitchenette where they bake sometimes, there are cookies, uh, seasonal, we may do seasonal things in there. Um, the, as I said, the poetry program, you know, things like that that you learn from, and there are painting sessions, so you can, I mean, children love to play with paint, so there are painting classes. Um, so all different things that you can touch, feel, <laughs> and enjoy <laughs> at the library, and take and make crafts which you can take home. I'm really glad to hear there's no technology in the children's room. Right, in the last room. In the gym, yeah, yeah. It, for the young children. Right. Because right. though I definitely believe that we all need to be up on mm -hmm. technology up to about age five or seven or whatever, it's like 
I, I, I feel as though just like experiencing mm -hmm. the physical world in three dimensions is a very important starting point for all of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I see even in classroom, kindergarten classrooms or preschool classrooms, computers, and I just cringe and think, I'm so glad I'm retired now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never let there be a computer in my preschool class. Mm -hmm. But m my co-teacher told me the year after I retired, um, um, I, I hate to tell you this, but we have a computer now. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Well, one of the things that you will see when you first walk into the library that Madhu didn't mention, and it's a little more prosaic, but it's, it's useful, is there's usually a box of free books sitting oh, on yeah. a table mm -hmm. somewhere um, so that you can come right in the door and before you know it, you can be browsing in this <laughs> free book section. You may not even have to make it all the way up to the desk to have something checked out. One thing that is also going on this year is as you come up the second set of stairs from the parking lot, there's a, um, there's a very inexpensive display of books there, but there's also books that our librarians have put together in gift bundles oh. that are all mm -hmm. wrapped up and tied for a very small price, so that if you want to do a little holiday shopping and you don't have a lot of money because new books are pretty expensive, yeah. uh, this is a way that you can find gently used books that are, some of them are in brand new condition. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're usually three, three books in a yeah, stack, three, yep. and they're usually mm -hmm. on similar topics or by the same author or something like that. So it's a great way to do inexpensive um, holiday shopping, too. So that is another service that our library offers. Now, for the last well, almost three years now, since COVID started, mm -hmm. it's kind of turned any kind of social gathering places Mm -hmm. our society has upside down. So what have you had to adapt to COVID over the last few years? And which of those things um, are you continuing because they, you found that they're helpful? Um, so when COVID happened, the library was shut down. Then we opened a few hours, but the meeting rooms remained closed. So Zoom was very, very popular. And I can't thank enough our uh, knitting group. So we had a knitting group who used to meet in the library every Thursday morning. And when COVID happened, all of the knitters were, like they could not come to the library and they did not want to come to the library. So we connect, keep, kept them connected through Zoom. So, so via Zoom, they would all connect, they would knit together, they would talk. And this year, we welcomed them back into the building. This was something that I'm, I'm so proud of and so thankful to that group. Um, as I said, take and make craft for all age groups, adults, teens, children, very, very popular. They, and we continue to do it. And I, I, it's, they're not going anywhere because some parents who work multiple jobs, they quickly stop by at the library, grab two, three bags for different ages, and they leave the library. And they seem to be very popular. Uh, interactive movie kits. So for every movie title, we have an interactive kit for the entire family. So when you pick that up, you watch that movie and along with that movie you can do a craft with the family and there are like do this craft at this time you know that that kind of activity so people enjoy that that's very very popular so there are things I mean some of our uh, workshops that used to be in person continue to still be via zoom well zoom does have the advantage that even you know, if you have programs they can be presented by people anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's really been kind of a revelation to me. You know, some of the groups that I'm in that I've gotten to know people on the West Coast or mm -hmm. in the Midwest who are working on similar things that we would never come to get to anything in person together. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe a couple times a year we see each other on Zoom, mm -hmm. and it's really I don't think we need to to you know, turn our back on that lesson. True. True. Our history program, Hamster Diaries, continued to be a virtual program during COVID. And 
I, we don't see any participant who wants to come back. They want to be connected via Zoom because not only people from New London, but people from other towns also attend the Hemsworth Diaries program. So it's easy for them not to commute, not to come here in person. Plus, um, some of our staff members are a certain age, and they once they kind of retired, but they continue to do some programs for us, and it was comfortable for them to be at home via Zoom to do these programs. I, I do know a lot of people who are older or uh, in fragile health mm -hmm. who are avoiding large, large gatherings. gatherings. Yeah, and yeah. I actually avoid most large gatherings if I, if I can get away with it because, right. you know, you, you don't really know. Mm -hmm. you know. I still don't like, like shopping in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But so, and one thing, now, you mentioned in, in passing also is the meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. are, are they open again? They're open, they're open. And uh, in 20, uh, so tw financial year 2022, we booked 20, 221 meetings. So suddenly as the rooms opened up, there was so much need for space. Say people who were working from home or groups that were operating from home because of space for Wi-Fi purposes would come to the library and look for meeting spaces. And meeting spaces became very, very popular. So we had we booked 221 room, uh, meeting spaces last year. Um, now, when you were talking about the different kinds of programs and activities, you talked a lot about the children's uh, things and a little bit about the adults. Um, and I know you have a lot of different kinds of teen programming, mm -hmm. and teens are probably kind of a challenging group to get into the library. So what do you do for teens? Um, we do a lot of different programs for teens, but we also ask them, like, what do, do you want to do? Because not all teens are interested in doing gaming, you know, especially boys are into more into gaming. Girls are not more into gaming. So we have to kind of cater to the needs of all age groups, or not, uh, yeah. boys and girls. So. We do, as I said, we did a painting program, which was popular. We did gaming nights is twice a week. Um, Dungeons and Dragon is a game that they play, they love to play. Uh, and baking class is very popular with boys and girls together. So they do muffins and they do pizzas. So those are, those are things that yeah. teenagers kind of <laughs> relate <Right>. well with, <laughs> food. <laughs> so food programs are very popular. Um, as I said, we just had a poetry program. Um, there are some discussion programs. So we also partner with local book clubs to do programs for teens. So we had a program where we kind of discussed a book together. Um, so those are the kind of programs that we do for teens. But again, on demand, like if a teenager comes up, science kits, they love science kits. Um, circuit, they put circuits together. That was one of our most popular kits, take and make kits that was available for teens. Um, Again, slime. Slime is something that oh. teens love. Oh my God, those those kind of take and make craft bags are so popular with teens. I still love slime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The kind good you enough. make yourself, not the kind you yeah. find <laughs> in the back of the refrigerator. Right, right. Ah, that's true. <laughs> right, not not the science experiment that right. is uncontrolled. Right, and uh, um, this December we are going to be doing. Uh, there's an anime club that's popular, Game On, and then this is Glass Planters with Basil. So they're going to be planting basil in oh, nice. So small programs, hand-on activities are popular. And uh, with the slime, we've seen that uh, these teenagers try, they work in groups. So they uh -huh. take the kids and they sit down on a table and they work together. Uh -huh. And you know, they're loud, they're themselves. So that's what teens are all about. <laughs> now, um, you know, it's December, so school vacation is mm -hmm. coming up and holidays are coming up. And I know you usually have some kinds of special activities mm -hmm. uh, going on, uh, both in terms of what people, you know, can do to entertain themselves and in terms of supporting the community. So mm -hmm. maybe you can talk a little about those. Well, in terms of supporting the community, right now we are doing a food drive, as usual. Mm -hmm. So it used to be... Um, Instead of fines, you could bring in a can of, or, you know, or uh, some dried pasta or something like that to contribute, and your fines would be forgiven. But now we're just doing the food drive. Forget about the 
the finds. There's also a hat tree, isn't there, Madhu? It's a, it's a yeah, knitting, um, a knitting, knitting tree. The yeah. knitting group has made hats and scarves that are on a little tree mm -hmm. in the adult room so that if you need a hat or m maybe there are even mittens there too. Mittens, scarves, yeah. hats, um, uh, we're that. collecting those for local mm -hmm. nonprofits. But so if you are in need, you can grab one from there. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, you know, those are things that are seasonal that we're doing. Um, I don't know about specific programs that are going on during right. the vacation. Right, so during the vacation week, we have every day there is a different activity for children and teens. Um, for children, I do know that there is a week of December 27. There is a straw rocket, the candy cane mice, pencil toppers, and they're doing paper airplanes. And on December 30th, there is Countdown to Noon program, which is really fun. We get a lot of families to attend wow. that. Um, so they're going to do, um, they're going to pop a balloon at noon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it makes more sense than right. midnight for many of us. <laughs> um, so they're going to be do. they're calling it a balloon drop. <laughs> so <laughs> that's popular with families at noon. So we're going to do that. Yeah, you um, don't need to go to Times Square. No. Come to the London <laughs> Library. Uh -huh. And uh, teens have a particular program going on every single day during vacation week. Plus, computers are all open. Gaming will be happening. We have also we also have board game nights. So it will be busy. Now, I, I think when I first got in touch with you, you said that you had a couple of like kind of brand new s things that the library are, is involved in, uh, or newish programs, and I don't remember if you told me what they are, but uh, I, I was going to ask what's new that, that people who haven't been at the library in the last year might not be familiar with already. So Lawyers at Libraries is a program that's very, very popular. We started this when COVID happened, and uh, so you call us and you book a slot. Um, lawyers are at the library and you get an appointment for 15 to 20 minutes and you can discuss your problems uh, or your questions, concerns with the lawyer. So uh, that has been very popular. All our time slots are booked. So if somebody is looking for an appointment to discuss something with a lawyer, please feel free to call us. It can us. be any kind of thing? It or? can be any kind of thing. Yeah, they, they give you their, I won't say advice or uh, yeah. They'll answer your question to the best of their uh, yeah, abilities. Um, also, um, as I said, Toy Library is new at the library. The Digital Navigator is new at the library. Um, so those are the things that have been very, am I forgetting We're anything? going to have social service. So, uh, right, so there is a mental health consultant at the library through uh, the generous support of City of New London, ARPA grants. Uh, the mental health consultant is currently working with different age groups or setting up a table to let people know that the mental health consultant is here and if there's help needed, she or he will be able to answer. Mm -hmm. So that's another new service that is available at the library. I did notice looking at, at the website that um, the uh, focus groups on the community mm -hmm. center are going to be held at the library. At the library. Right. I don't remember the dates, but there were a couple scheduled. Right. So if anyone in, in New London mm -hmm. or in Waterford and the surrounding communities are interested in giving input mm -hmm. on what's going to, you know, be addressed in, in, in our community center that's being built, then you know it's a good time to have public involvement right. in that mm -hmm. process. So we are advertising for uh, our first um, session, which is December eighth at five o'clock, five five thirty. Oh, so that's just right. a couple it's days away. Yeah, right. yeah, mm -hmm. it's just Thursday. Thursday. Uh, Thursday. So we're inviting New London residents to come and give their input about the new community center that's going to be coming up. Um, also, I hope we. As a library, get a little bit of space in there so no, that yeah, we yes, are able to do some programming. We're hoping that that would be a, a place for us to meet people where they are, maybe a little reading room or mm -hmm. something or other. Maybe you know. story that would time. be great. A little yeah. lending library, you know, something right. like that there. So Well, I, I do hope that uh, it becomes not just a recreational center, mm -hmm. but, but really a community, community center. Right, yeah. and. Mm -hmm. To me, that seems like that's the challenging piece of the planning, mm -hmm. is how to make it really a place for all of the community, not just those who you know, want to swim laps or mm -hmm. you know, have an indoor spot for athletic activities. Mm -hmm. So 
That's uh, we're very grateful to the city for mm -hmm. everything they've done for us, you know, for their funding and for their inclusiveness and being interested in supporting our programs and our initiatives. Um, they were instrumental in getting us funds for our teen room. Mm -hmm. uh, and a less exciting point for most people, but very important one, we just had to have roof repairs done to our historic building. It's a yeah. slate roof, so it was not easy or inexpensive to get that done. And those are ongoing because by doing that, they discovered that there were other structural problems underneath part of the roof. So that's never ending. But the city has been wonderful. The mayor and the city council have been wonderful. The community foundation has been great. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't say enough about the support that we've had throughout the community. It's really refreshing. That's really good to hear because unlike many municipal libraries, our library operates largely independently. Well, yes. Of mm -hmm. city government. Right. Mm -hmm. We are not a department of the city. Right. So to have so much cooperation from the city is really encouraging. We like to feel that it's a mutual benefit. We save the city money because they don't have to go through some of the things that they have to go through with their, their uh, municipal force. On the other hand, we also benefit because the city is very generous to us. I don't think that there is a single person in city government who would say, bad things about the library, except maybe they might like us to be open more hours, and that's easy enough to remedy, just, um, you know. Yeah, it's money. <laughs> <laughs> money right, that's for funding. staff. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're doing the best we can with what we have, and we have had um, very good support, again, as I mm -hmm. said, from the city councilor, uh, the city council, I mean, and the uh, mayor, and then the community foundation and the other um, the other grant makers. yeah grants that we have that I don't want to mention all their names mm -hmm. for fear of leaving one out but yeah we do we do get um, eighty percent of our budget is it About do, from the city yeah. and that's something that we well, that isn't bad that's mm -hmm. something that we have to ask for and budget for each year and we talk to the city folks about it and we work it out uh, as to what a good figure would be but there's we're still providing excellent services for the amount of money that we get. Well, I think of a uh, of library as being kind of the last of the indoor commons of communities. Mm -hmm. uh, and even the commons outdoors is shrinking, but libraries are what one of the very few institutions where people walk in, there's no expectation that they have to spend money to be able to sit down. And, you know, it's not a transaction. It's like this is a community. They, they, house. Yes, it mm -hmm. belongs to everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, in addition to the specific things like books and access mm -hmm. to technology and you know literacy and all mm -hmm. of that, I think just as it, a library's function as a place where everyone, you know, all walks of life can just walk in and be welcome, it is. A, an important public good that it's hard for the government to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to replicate other places. And well, I'll gripe for one minute that like City Hall is less open than the, the library these mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm, I'm really glad the library is still there and, you know, its doors are open during those hours. Well, we do have an initiative statewide with libraries for diversity, Equity, okay. inclusion, and accessibility. I think those are the four yeah, yeah. points. Mm -hmm. And the library has been always open to everyone. Um, we have made a concerted effort to include some of the different language groups with the materials that we buy and, and we present to people. We are working on the accessibility issues. You know, the it's library building, building is an old mm -hmm. building, so um, it is accessible. It is handicap accessible because of our elevators and um, one of the new grant things that we're going to be doing in the coming year is making the adult reading room restroom at handicap accessible so those are all things that we are working you know retrofitting to do but you are right the library is kind of the one place where you go where the american dream really is working everybody is welcome there so i'm glad to hear that people in the city are broadly supportive of it mm -hmm. So people watching this who are listening to all the different things the library 
uh, does who want to get involved or support the library in some way, uh, how are the different ways that people can either, you know, donate something or volunteer or whatever? Well, of course, we are always willing to accept monetary donations. We do send out our yearly letter asking for it. I have to say that we don't get a lot of um, a lot of income through that because our letter doesn't go out to enough people. Uh, New London's population is quite a bit smaller than it used to be. Um, there also aren't the um, vast resources available that there used to be. So we still do that and people are very generous that way. What we really have to depend on is the city council and the mayor to work on our budget with us and to give us what we need that way. Again, there are other foundations that we get money from, too, for different things, but the bulk of it comes from the city itself. But in terms of the average citizen, well, yes, if, if you feel generous, you can come and make a donation. Also, our Adopt-A-Book program is going on for $10. $20, $15, you can adopt a book and dedicate it to someone or, or make it a memorial to something that happened in your family, and that book will be there with a book plate on it that says that. Uh, that helps us out quite a bit. Um, in terms of participating in the library, you know, it's not just about books and not just about taking books. It's also about the programs that we offer and the different activities that are going on. Um, it's great if word of mouth spreads that message. Uh, there are a lot of times that people are kind of down on different things in New London for a various number of reasons, but we want to kind of dissuade the public from the idea that it's not a good place to be. It's an excellent place to be. In terms of volunteering, Madhu, mm -hmm. I don't know what volunteer um, positions or, or activities there are available at the moment. Uh, the teen volunteer uh, we're all we're always uh, looking for teen volunteers because we and uh, teen teens come in and they want uh, volunteer hours for school uh, for certain programs and they're always w welcome to put books away or you know do a program for us. So teen volunteers is something that's growing and uh, it's always always popular. Um, children's room we do not take any volunteers for the children's room. Adult room if you need any court hours or if you need any hours for a certain purpose. Uh, we do find jobs that you would like to do, and we connect you to them. So we do offer adult services, uh, volunteer hours. Now, I was going to ask you, mean specifically if the Board of Directors is looking for members. Yes. Or, uh, and I hear it's not much work. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> um, we always like to have a list of people that we can go to if there is a vacancy that occurs in the library. We like to keep the board um, kind of balanced in terms of the different specialties and skills that people bring mm. to the board. We do have um, an attorney who is on the board, so when we have legal questions, we can run them by the attorney. We do have a couple of financial people on the board to kind of help us out with that. We do have some people who are representative of the different communities in New London who also have special interests in making their voices heard. Um, and then we are looking for some people who are willing to help out fundraising and mm -hmm. you know, spreading the word of the library and being good public ambassadors for the library. So if you are interested, if anyone is interested, please just leave your name with Madhu and uh, we'll put you on our list and talk to you about it. We're, we always need, that is one of the things I think that many, um, many volunteer organizations are facing right now. It's mm. difficult to get younger people involved. And of course, younger people who have children and families and jobs, they don't often have the time to devote. So that's why sometimes a board will look um, very much grayer than the population it represents. So it's good to get input from younger folks in terms of what, what you want and what you need. Yeah. I do think that we older folks have a little more leisure time than the mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. ones. Um, now, are you still planning an annual book sale? Is this a tradition that's continuing or not, or what? We would like to. Um, that was done through the Friends of the Library. And as you know, the great, the great champion of the Friends of the Library was Josie Esposito, who, um, who died 
I think three years ago. Mm -hmm. So she died shortly after COVID began, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And then once COVID kind of took over, that was it, you know. Um, so trying to pull that organization back together has been difficult. Um, we were talking with some members of the Friends and they want to do a book sale again in May if they can. But right now it's just kind of re, you know, reorganizing, getting in touch with the members and trying to revivify yeah. the group itself. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. It's a tremendous amount of work. Uh, we do accept books that people want to donate towards it. We're, we're putting them away to be sorted later, but we would love to be able to do that. It's a very popular thing that yeah. goes on and people look forward to it. And mm -hmm. with Josie, she always had a few other side things going on too, like a bake sale and plant sale and right. mm -hmm. uh, white oh, elephant I sale. Plant sales. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we would like to do that, but I don't know whether it's going to be possible or not. The past few years, it, it hasn't yeah. been for those two reasons at least. So if anyone is watching and wants to get involved with the Friends of Group, especially if you're interested in you know, helping this, the, the, the annual book sale come back, uh, that would be uh, helpful. And I did notice on the website too that you mentioned an e-newsletter that people can sign up on. Right, so on our uh, website there is uh, a button where if you want to s subscribe to our newsletter and you get a choice of whether you want to hear news from the entire library or just the children's room or just the teens room or adult room, so you have a choice to do that. So you can sign up for our e-newsletter and we, uh, whenever we update all our information regarding our programs, we send it out. Or if there is any special program, I'm say Adopt a Book is happening, so we send out a special e-newsletter saying Adopt a Book is happening at the library, support the library. So um, information regarding the library is sent out every other week or every week, depending on what kind of programs are coming up. Now, after we talked last year, I actually did renew my library <laughs> card, <laughs> which I had probably gotten in 1994 when I moved mm -hmm. to New London, mm -hmm. and it didn't really work anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had it, it was crumbled. The, the, the barcode mm -hmm. on the back didn't relate to anyone. And uh, we didn't mention it, but you know, do you want to talk for a minute about ca uh, Canopy for people who like uh, mm -hmm. streaming uh, movies and TV shows? Right. So um, we have DVDs and people come and check out DVDs. But when COVID happened, the library building was closed for a little bit or open only for a few hours a day. So we decided that we would um, subscribe to Canopy database which means you, with your free library card, if you have a New London library card, you can access movies. And I do get uh, data for the usage, and on Fridays you can see that data go up, oh. which is now it is so popular. You have children's movies, you have adult movies, you have all different kinds of um, uh, movies that you can stream through your free library card. So um, do you see what everyone streams? No, pride. Uh, I know we don't get that data oh, of anywhere. No personal data. No. Because we, no. we do stream stuff, but it's really silly stuff. I don't yeah, know if I no, want. No, we don't judge. No, no. Don't. We do not. We do not uh, <laughs> carry any reports for oh, yeah. individuals. It's just that I get a data that so How many, many movies, so so many adult movies, and so many children's movies were streamed. So we that pay on a monthly basis. Yeah. So we know what is popular. Well, that is really interesting. And my son, who moved to California uh, three years ago, he's in Redwood City, California. And I just, like in the last week, said, we're watching something on Canopy. Um, can you get Canopy where you are? And he said, oh, yeah, OK, Redwood City Library is also part of Canopy. And oh, I just nice. signed up. So it, it isn't really something that's mm -hmm. just right here. Mm -hmm. It's terrific resource and mm -hmm. they have TV shows and movies mm -hmm. that you really don't see other places. Right, right. And um, say it's Black History Month, they'll give you suggestions for movies for Black History, for holiday season, they'll give you a list. So those are popular things that uh, people like to do during uh, festivities or special months. Also, I do, I do want to let everyone know that we do carry hotspots. Um, okay. So if you do not have Wi-Fi or you want to do, uh, you're remotely working or you're doing working on your homework, uh, hotspots are available at the library and you can use them for three weeks and they have to be returned. Oh, 
but they are very popular. So if you are looking for one, do let us know and we'll put your name. Or if one is available, you can, you, re you can readily check it out. Now, we only have a few minutes left, but I wanted to mention when I, look, I was looking at the website, there is like really a lot of information on the website. One of the things that it said you have on loan are cake pants. You do. Yes. So I wrote just a little note to myself, cake pants, question marks, because it seems like something you wouldn't expect to find in the library. Mm -hmm. But can you spend a minute talking about what kind of cake pans you have? Right. We, I have I'm going to talk quickly talk about <laughs> in one minute. I'm going to talk about both things. So cake pans and seeds. So oh. we have a seed library also. Cake pans. Uh, if you have children and you won't bake the same cake every year, you would want something different. So we carry cake pans. So you can come and check out a cake pan, return it back when it, when you're done. And we have different, different right. kinds. There's a Scooby-Doo <laughs> one there because <laughs> I donated that one. <laughs> <laughs> and we ha also have a seed library. So when it's time for people oh, to plant, yeah. so we get seeds for flowers, fruits, vegetables, and you can uh, plant seeds and uh, Deneen brings us well, uh, so we have a plant exchange, plant exchange, exchange yes. program and Deneen is very actively involved yes, and you I want to talk about her plants up the yin yang <laughs> and I'm glad <laughs> to bring them in. This, this I know the, the feeling that it, it <laughs> lets downsize so <laughs> some of the plants are potted most of them are potted mm -hmm. some of them are just sitting in little glasses of water you know so you can take them home and mm -hmm. put them in whatever you want but the plant exchange is wonderful um, you can bring one and get one, or you can just get one, <laughs> or just bring one. Um, it's, it's a great way to have people come in and, mm -hmm. and feel like the library is a place to go for things you need and want to know about. Now, what are the current open hours of the library? Uh, we're open seven days a week. Um, Monday, through Friday, Monday through Thursday, we're open 9.30 to 7.00. Um, Fridays and Saturdays, we're open 9.30 to 5.00 5, 5 p.m. And on Sundays, we're open 1 to 4. Thank you. Well, we have about two minutes left. Thank you, both of you, Madhu and uh, Deneen, for coming on again. It's Thank really you, nice Anna. to see you in person. I want to let people out there know that uh, this Saturday, I think it's the 10th um, of December, there's going to be a Hoot for Hunger um, fundraiser at Wright Path, uh, and it raises money for the uh, meal center, I believe. So if people are interested in one other thing that's going on in New London that should be both entertaining and, and helps the community, uh, Wright Path, uh, Hugh Birdsall, as usual, uh, organized it with a great batch of musicians from, I think, three to five. So again, thank you, and you know, to the rest of you out there, next week we'll have another New London organization. So uh, I'll see you next year, and I'll see you at the library. Thank you thanks so much, very Rana. much for, Rana. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Mm -hmm. Thank you.